Today I'm shooting photos of smoke that I can use in my composites. Hi, I'm Vanessa. Welcome to my channel. I like to talk about all things creative photography related. If that sounds like something you're interested in, hit subscribe and the notification bell so that you can get notified the next time I upload a video. A lot of my work is composite work in Photoshop and today I'm going to be taking photos of three different kinds of smoke that I can use as a layer in Photoshop for my composites. So I'm going to teach you guys the quickest, easiest way to get images of smoke that you can use easily in Photoshop. So here is my setup. I'm outside and the reason why I decided to shoot outside of my carport today is because the last time that I did this inside the house, the smoke tends to kind of fill up the room and get a little bit hazy. So this way each burst will just kind of dissipate as we go and it'll be nice and clear when I take the photos that I'm looking for. My kids are fascinated because the <laughs> first way that I am going to be taking pictures of smoke is by using a fog machine. So I like to pick up the fog machine juice and if they die, because sometimes they do, I grab a new fog machine right after Halloween when everything's 50% off. So this coming November 1st, keep your eye out to get sweet deals on that. What I do is I hang up the darkest background that I possibly have because I want my end images to be black with the smoke on that so that all I have to do in Photoshop is set it to a screen blend mode and not mask anything out. So even though this is not completely black, it's a really, really dark blue and I'll be able to make it completely black in Photoshop. So the smoke machine will give the most billowing effect when I push the button and a whole bunch of it comes out, but it also every now and then tends to release just a little burst because it needs to let go of the pressure or something. So even photographing those tiny little spurts will result <laughs> in a different kind of smoke image. So rather than having a big billow, I can also get just kind of a little wisp as well. So I'll be doing both with the fog machine. So I am using the widest lens that I have because I want to be able to capture the whole thing and have like black frame all the way around so that in Photoshop I can move it around and it's not gonna be cut off and have to line up a particular way with the edges of the image. So I wanna get the most amount of the smoke in the shot when it first initially bursts so that it's not like all over the place. And I'll show you guys an example of what I'm talking about so that you can visually see the issue that I am trying to avoid. So I'm really happy with the fog machine images that I got and now I am ready to move on to the next item that I'm going to photograph to get some smoke images. And that is a stick of incense. So this will give a totally different look. I'll get that like tendril of smoke going up and it will be completely different from the smoke machine images but taken in the exact same way with the dark background and all of that. So. I almost lost these and I almost grabbed a cigarette to use a cigarette instead. Um, but luckily I was able to find my incense because they smell a little bit better than just a random burning cigarette. But either of them will get that like tendril of smoke coming up. I got probably hundreds of images from that incense stick and it is still going. I like to take lots and lots because of all the different patterns and shapes that it makes. It's completely at random, but sometimes, you know, you can be looking at the images and you'll see like a face or like it'll look like a dancing person or something like that. So I take lots just because if something like that happens, then it's really cool to play with in Photoshop and make it part of your image. Other than that, things that I like to do with these tendrils of smoke. I like to make it look like it's coming off the hair and that the hair is turning into smoke and floating away or it would work really good if you were doing some kind of like maybe like a Harry Potter theme and you had a wand and you needed something coming off of the end of the wand that would work really well with this kind of smoke as well. So the last thing that I'm going to be taking images of is actually just going to be a really hot cup of 
probably tea because I'm gonna drink it after and um, and so I'm looking for more of a steamy look for this and so it's not technically smoke but it is still needs to be shot in the exact same way as the incense and the fog machine and so this will give me a com another completely different look that I can then use in photos as well so the steaming mug was probably the most difficult just because it was so faint and every little breeze that came by basically just blew it completely away. But I did manage to get a couple shots that will work so I have a little bit of everything from this shoot. As far as settings go for these images, it's going to depend on whether you're shooting outside or inside or using some kind of studio lights or whatever. But in general, for these types of images, I mostly want to make sure that I'm getting the smoke in focus. It is moving, so I am having more priority over the shutter speed. Normally I'll shoot with a really low ISO and a low aperture, but for these I want it to be in focus even though it's moving. So I do raise my ISO and my aperture a little bit so that I'm not having a super shallow depth of field. I don't mind if these images end up having a bit of noise from the higher ISO. I can always run a noise reduction on it. Mostly it doesn't really show up just because it's not the actual image itself and it's just going to, going to be added as a blend mode. Editing these images in Photoshop is really straightforward. All I do is select the smoke images that I want to use and usually I convert it to black and white so that it's not going to make any changes to the color of the image that I'm working on. I will usually adjust the levels so that the black is completely black in the background. Otherwise, it will show up when I set it to screen mode on an image. And color out or erase anything like the chair or the incense or anything like that that I don't actually want in the image. I will usually just color it out with black. So if you're like, that's cool and everything, Vanessa, but you don't think you're going to put all the effort into taking all these different kinds of smoke images for you to maybe use one day in a composite. Well, you're in luck because I am going to have a selection of these images available as a bundle on my Gumroad. So the link to that shop is down below. Or if you're interested in learning more about overlays that you can use in your images, I also have a video about how to take photos of sparklers so that you can have sparkler overlays. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.